ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله نشهد يا رسول الله انك قد اديت الامانه وبلغت الرساله ونصحت الامه وكشف الله بك الغمه وجاهدت في الله حق جهاده حتى اتاك اليقين فجزاك الله عنا خير ما جزى نبيا عن امته ورسولا عن رسالته اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters in islam today's topic about a business proposal we are in the west we love to hear about business and making money but we'll talk about it in a different light talk about the marketing we're talking about the location we're talking about surrounding yourself with successful people in order for you to be successful and also you may have to do some trips so you will need your passport and in the end it's about the P&L your profit and loss your balance statement your assets and liabilities and the bottom line those who win and those who lose so let's find out where we are and how we're going to end up how we're going to make it or break it in a half an hour summarizing this is difficult but may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who listen speech and follow the best of it amen in the beginning when they say marketing they say gradual growth and they also say location 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 and they talk about the word of mouth as the best type of marketing and so on and so forth and then we'll go into the aspect of business but before you have to do the marketing and in the end you'll get the your passport and you will see whether you have some visas whether you're allowed in or out and what's on your passport you'll talk about your name your date of birth expiry your address and so on and so forth so hopefully we can relate to that in a way that is a uh, different so when we say location, what do I mean by that? When we emphasize the fact, you know, you can open a shop, you have the best product, everything is good, but if you're in a bad location, you're not gonna make it. And if we say, if in order for you to be successful in business, you have to surround yourself with successful people, well, you'll have to look at who's around you. And a word of mouth, what's your reputation? So let's take one at a time for now. Location, location, location. So where do you hang out? And who do you hang around with? And when you leave this place, what do people say about you? You know what will people say about you after you're gone? They will simply say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. So why do you worry about what people say? Because that's what they will say after you're gone. And that's why Hassan al-Basri rahmatullahi says, do you know what he just said? He says, yeah, I know, but he translated the meaning. He says, no, that's not what it is. He says, if you know for sure that you were created, then know for sure that you will die. And if you know for sure that you will die, then best assured that you will be buried. And if you know for sure that you'll be buried, then you better know that you'll be resurrected. And if you know that for sure you're going to be resurrected, then you better know that you will be held accountable by Allah. And if that's the case, you will better know that وَقِفُوهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ مَسْؤُلُونَ Stop them, they will be asked. Summon them. And 
He says, if you know for sure that you will stop in front of Allah, then you better know that you will be asked questions. And if you know that you'll be asked questions, الجواب للسؤال. If you know for sure that you're going to stand in front of Allah, on a day that is 50,000 years, لا تزول قدم عبد حتى يسأل عن أربع. You know for sure that you will not be able to move your feet and you will hear your name. أين فلان ابن فلان؟ Where is so the son of so? هلم للعرض على الجبار. Come, summon them before me. Stand and answer the question. So if you know for sure that you'll be asking questions, then do you know the questions? If we don't know the questions, how the, are we going to get the answers? So he says, you better prepare the answer for the questions. Let me take you on a journey. Understanding the most important part is the beginning. So I have to take you front and back to know how gold the chance that you have in that within your fingers. So don't let it slip through your fingers. 120 days in the womb, even mother, four things are written. Your lifespan, your risk, your umur, and your risk, your sustenance and provisions. Your amal, your actions and deeds. Shaqiyun am sa'id, happy or sad. Close to the mercy of Allah or away from the mercy of Allah. By your actions and deeds. So the scholars say two things are written in the womb that they are actually guaranteed. That we are concerned about. Our whole life, we're worried about what, what's going to happen to my life. Where am I going to get my risk? Am I going to be able to pay the bills? How am I going to take care of my children? So the scholars will say this is a favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done upon you that you can never thank Him for. He guaranteed the two things that you worry about. What are they? Your life and your risk. Guaranteed. 120 days. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu wa an ahli al-bayt al-atari wa sahabati azma'in. He said, Wallahi, I was on a journey. I went to a masjid to pray. I asked the man to take care of my horse. When I came back, the horse was there, but the reins of the horse were gone. So I had to go to the marketplace to look for other reins to substitute. I saw my own reins. So I asked the merchant, Astahlifuka billah. I ask you for the sake of Allah, how much money did you pay the man that gave you those two reins? He says, gave him two dinar. He says, Wallahi, I had the intention to give him the two dinar. But by Allah, he was in a rush to get his wealth. Meaning what, Akhi? You're going to get the exact same provisions. The only thing that you will be asked about on Judgment Day, Where did you get it from and how did you spend it? So you think about your business, my brothers and sisters. Your liabilities and your assets are your good deeds and your bad deeds. Think about your balance sheet. Think about the bank in this dunya and the bank in the hereafter. We want more, more. هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ وَلَا يَمْلَوْ عَيْنُ بْنِ آدَمْ إِلَّا تُرَابٍ We want more. 100,000? No, no, I want to be a millionaire. I'm a millionaire now, I want to be a billionaire. Nothing will fulfill the eyes of that child of Adam except dust when we die. Hoarding, more, more. So I'll give you the eight over three now since we're talking about it. The eight are over three in the Quran. The scholars will tell you if you take the eight over the three, may Allah help you. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَأُكُمْ وَأَبْنَأُكُمْ وَأَخْوَانُكُمْ وَعَشِرَتُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٍ اقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَسَاكِنْ تَرْضَوْنَهَا This is a tijara, you want it. So you see the eight are halal, the scholars say. He says, تِجَارَةً تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنْ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ Here's the continuation. She says, your father, الْأَبْوَ إِنْ عَلَى وَالْإِبْنُ وَإِنْ دَنَا So your fathers and upwards. Don't you know who I'm from lineage? And I'm in the Tartushi Basha. Don't mess with me, man. I come from this lineage, man. Don't, don't talk to me. Are you talking to me? I know so and so. And I have lineage. Ah, and you know the brethrens. I have the posse. I have the power. Al Udda wal Adid. I have the numbers. Ah, this tribe. I come from this tribe. Oh no, no, you can't marry from my tribe, even though it's the same country. No, no, no. Your, your tribe is different than mine. You live in the north. I live in the south. You have a different color skin tone, a different dialect. So there is no isms, Habibi, in Islam. And then the tribes come in, the spouses, 
yeah, I took a daughter of so and so. Did you get? I, I married this guy, man. Do you believe it? And the uh, money you hoard, and the business you're afraid to lose, and the dwellings that you're hoarding on to, is more beloved than Allah wa Rasulullah, what you had in fi sabili. It's called fat taqib, fatar abbasu. It's a plural. He says, if it's more beloved to you than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you Allah. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and striving for his sake in every means, and every way, in every matter, fa wait till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreases his matter. So that's your criteria, my brothers and sisters, for business. Is it halal or haram first, actually? Not how much money it will make. And your location, we're talking about the masajid. Because this location will come after in the passport. So if you want, you have to say when that, in business, they tell you if you want to be successful, surround yourself with successful people. So are the people around you right now, where do you think they're going to take you? How are you going to end up? You know you'll be resurrected with the people who you love. So is your friend, uh, who you, who's your posse, Habibi? Uh, I know brother uh, Mimi, Tutu, Lulu, Susu, and Fifi. Wallahi, no way. What about Abdullah, Abdurrahman, Muhammad, and Ahmed? What happened to those brothers, Akhi? No, no, these are backward brothers. They, they remind me, Akhi, Quran and Sunnah. I mean, yeah, what happened? So I'm going to give you three criteria, quick, quick. If you have these criteria and the people that you're surrounding, hold on to them. If not, fire them get somebody else and replace them. Just like business deals, man. You have to make harsh decisions. If you want to make it, it's all about the bottom line. So there are three criteria the scholars will tell you of a friend you keep. If you see them, they will remind you of Allah. I haven't prayed Asr yet. I see Sheikh Abdullah. Abdullah is Allahu Akbar. I haven't prayed Asr yet. If you see them, they remind you of Allah. They will guide you in a straight path, the way they live, the way they talk, the way they eat, the way they behave. They do everything according to the Quran and Sunnah. Number three, It will increase your iman. When they speak, they remind you of Allah, they remind you of Quran, they remind you of Sunnah Rasulullah. They remind you of heaven and hell, life, the truth about it, and the truth in the hereafter. These are the three criteria. Look around. Are these the three criteria you have as your friends now? If not, please look for these three criteria. Where do you find it? Right here. It's a long story. The time is running. Now the third one, the word of mouth. So who do you think? What's your reputation? Well, you'll know your reputation on the name of the passport in the end. Just think about it. When people come and they see you, they say, Allahu Akbar, brother so-and-so. Allahu Akbar, sister so-and-so is coming. Alhamdulillah. Or, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Razeem. Allah, Hasbunallah. Run, sell, move out. What's your reputation like? I'm not talking about the reputation with the people that we're not after. I'm talking about the reputation with the hood, the brotherhood, the real people, the one that Allah subhanahu wa jalla fila called believers. I'm not interested in what other people say. I'm interested in what the true brothers are saying. Because as shuhada, you are witnesses. It's a reflection. Understand that if Allah loves you, will make people love you, not the other people, these people. If they don't, then you better wake up before it's too late. After Jalsa Salah, inshallah, we'll take you on the other two in the roadmap and give you the keys for successful business, inshallah, in this dunya and the hereafter. My dear brothers and sisters, I understand this is a difficult topic to talk about. But it's good to wake up once in a while. In business aspect, you will also know that there's an accountant, there's an auditor, that somebody will check. And some investors, <coughs> and people will say, you know what? It's a good deal. You did good, son. I'm proud of you. Oh man, you're a loser. What happened? Didn't you know? It's the same thing, Habibi. In this life, it's the same thing. You know you get tested. Every year, you get tested. A final exam. And it shouldn't be a surprise to you. 
So if you've done your homework, you'll say, Ha umu qura'u kitabiya. If you haven't, Ya laytani lam uta kitabiya. Waiting for that, it's only a piece of paper that will make you graduate, go from grade two to grade three, or graduate from high school to get university. And after you get that, you get a job. Understand a piece of paper, you wait for it all year. Could you imagine a PhD? A professor says, according to one question, only one question, if you answer properly, I will give you a PhD. Would you at least be curious what that question is? Would you not at least devote your whole time to make sure you prepare for that question to answer? According to that, you're getting a PhD. Otherwise, you're going to be again. You're losing everything. Lost your time, your money, your effort, everything. People thought you're going to be the doctor come to save the country or whatever village we come from. And all of a sudden, you're infamous. You're supposed to be famous. Could you imagine? What do you think that question is? And what do you think the best shahada is? Certification. The one that will actually make it or break it. Not here, there. On a day that is 50,000 years, you understand you're going to get 99 files. Every one of us will get 99 files, every file as far as eyes can see. Every minor, major, everything is written, recorded. Nothing is hidden. And Allah will never oppress anyone. It's a promise. So I think about it. And if you compare the four things that are written in the womb, you'll find a lot of comparison in that in the hereafter. Al-umr is guaranteed. So fi umrihi fi I've given you umr. Have I not given you life? Ma tadakkar. Those who remember. Waja'akum al nadir A warner. You think it's just Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What about a gray hair on your face? What about a line beside your eyes? What about you cannot see without certain things? Or even hear with certain things? A noise you make when you sit down, another noise you make when you get up. People not around you anymore, they were here last week. Isn't that a nadir ya shaykh, when you look at yourself in the mirror before you go tonight? Think. So if that's the case, well I have to think about it. I'm gonna get examined for sure. Well, I'll get it guaranteed, the money's guaranteed, then I'm gonna say again, where do you get it from and how to spend it? You youth, how did you spend that? How are things are done? It's up to you, Akhi. You see, life is like a shopping mall, business. Are they gonna tell you you can't come to the shopping mall? No, come sir, please come. Come, Ukhti. We know how they love shopping. Enjoy. Are they gonna tell you not to go to a certain store? No, you can go to any store you like. Can you buy anything? Of course. You can pick up whatever you want from the shelf. But on the way out, what do you have to do? You have to pay. And that's exactly what the shopping mall is all about. You can do whatever you like in this shopping mall called life. But on the way out, here's your bill, sir. You have to pay now. Knowing that, my brothers and sisters, understanding it's all about plus and minuses. So your righteous deeds are a plus. Your bad deeds are in a minus. And since in this life we do not want our bank to be in the dread, we always want to make a deposit. That's why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu and his sahabat ajma'in is wallahi, not one single day the sun is risen upon and set upon. I did not increase my righteous deeds and my iman and that's not a good day. His measuring stick is not how much money I made. We're saying it's halal. We're not saying it's haram. It's halal as long as it's halal. Enjoy it. I want to be the best doctor, Muslim doctor, the best Muslim engineer, the best Muslim lawyer, the best Muslim whatever it is that you do. And excel because we're commanded to do ihsan. In excellence of everything we do. We're not asking you to come and live here and leave everything else. Now Allah, that's not what we're asking. But we're asking about the eight over three. The eight we talked about over the three. What's it more beloved to you than Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And you're striving for the sake of Allah and the fitan that is surrounding you. Everybody's telling you go left. Come on, man, live a little. And only one guy looks like this tell you, come on, man, Shaykh. 
Don't forget your share of life. Don't forget your share of life. You know what the scholars say? Some opinions. Your share of life is actually your, your shroud. That's the only materialistic thing you will literally take out of this one, the dunya. But of course, the good deeds that you will come back and so forth and so forth. But at the time, I don't have enough time to explain everything. But understanding that, my brothers and sisters, also know that in the business, sometimes you have to travel. And that's what we finish with. Your passport, inshallah. Your passport has your name. So I say, what's your name, man? My name is so-and-so. No, no, no. That's not what I'm asking. Your passport is different. This passport is not like what we have here. This passport is something for the here, for the hereafter. So when you say, what's your name? You understand the hadith says, after we die, what happens? Who will be called by? You will be called by the best names you were called upon in this earth. Or the worst names that you were called upon in this earth. And how will angels know you? Maybe you're walking alone here. And people don't like the way you look. But you're very famous in the heavens. Maybe you're alone, but you're very popular. Okay? Because you understand, after we die, they're not going to say, bring doctor so-and-so in the grave. No, the amana. Give me the body. Labels are gone. It's a believer or a disbeliever after. What's your address? You know, I live in... Uh, Blah, blah, blah. Very posh, posh. I drink tea with pinky up. Yes. I have strawberries with cream. That's what they do here in the UK, right? I'm very rich. I drive. I wear Johnny Versace, George Armani. I got bling bling, man. I got a Swiss bank account, private jet, private jet. Dude, I got lawyers. Don't you know who I am? This is the real Rolex. Good. I'm happy for you. But where do you live is what I mean. Where will you end up living in? And what will your grave be? A piece of heaven or a piece of hell? Will it collapse your ribs or will it expand as far as your eyesight can see? Will the gate open to see a place in Jannah? I mean, Ya Rabb, or the place in the hellfire? Will you Billah, may Allah protect us from that. Where do you live? Where do you live, Ali? Your address, your permanent address. How many of us moved so many times? No more. Why? Because of this? Dar al Qarar. That's it. You see, when Allah talks about the Hayah, He talks about the hereafter. In the Dar al Akhirah, the Hiyah, al Hayawan. The true life is the hereafter. But here it says Ma'isha. Those who stay away from my remembrance in every aspect, they will have a difficult life. Even though that they may be rich, but there's a void in the heart. They're hungry. Something is missing. Isn't that amazing? When they're all alone, they cry because even though they're so past and they have so many hits on Facebook, Instagram, you know what I mean? Everything. I'm so popular, man. But alone, I don't, I don't have it. SubhanAllah, the link is missing. The bars, the Wi Fi is low, the battery is low, Sheikh. The upload is such a low. You need to get a better router. You find it right here. Well, what else do you have? You have something called the expiry date. What's the expiry date on your passport? No, it's not what you think. Worship your Lord till what? Yaqeen? Oh, I have Yaqeen now? I'm certain? No. It's death. So there are ways that we will die. May Allah give us a good ending. Ibn Baz rahmatullah says, don't leave any prayer without saying these three du'a. Remember them well, akhi. He says, make sure you say minimum three du'a in every prayer. He says, Allahumma inni as'alaka husnal khatima. Oh Allah, I ask you to give me a good ending. And that's why some of the scholars will cry. He says, why are you crying? From your sins? He says, no, I'm afraid of usul khatima. I'm afraid I have a bad ending because there is no recovery after that. Don't die except in a state of Islam. Why? Because the way you live, the way you will die. And the way you die, the way you will be resurrected. So we cut to the chase. You just don't die except in a state of Islam. Okay. Then he says, the second one he says, Oh Allah, 
grant me a tawbah, a repentance that is accepted, sincere, comprehensive, completed, perfected before I die. And the last one he says, Ya muqallib al qulub wal absar, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. The hearts are in your hand, O oh Allah. They tremble, they change from one state to another. O oh Allah, let my heart be steadfast on your path, the light I see. He says, these three du'a, don't make sure you don't miss out on that before or after every salah, inshaAllah. So there's one way we can die, and the hadith says you will be snatched, your soul will be snatched out like a piece of wet wool with a sharp object and tries to flee inside your body. But hey, had and uh, how? You can't, there's no way out. Or it will come from min fi siqa. A, a, an ease of a gentle drop of water that comes out of a spout of a pot. The choice is yours. Which one do you want? Okay. And then, finally, you will have some visas. You know there is a places that you will have to find, file so many requests and so much paper and so much money and even have to hire lawyers to be able to get in that place. After you do all the stuff, you still get denied. And some other places you'll be able to go. So I'm asking you, what visas do you have on your passport? Yeah? Will you be proud of these visas on Judgment Day? Oh, I've been here, I've been there. You know, they scan you and they know exactly what you've been. So, Allah should never miss you or ordain you to be. And he should say, never see you where he forbade you to be. So the most important one in the last minute, do you have a visa for Jannah? Allahu Akbar. You see, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu gave you an invitation. That's why I'm inviting you to come and join us tomorrow for the conference. To learn about the best of the best. The one that will intercede for us on Judgment Day. Because it's كل أمتي في الجنة إلا من أبا. Everyone is going to Jannah. Except those who refuse. How do you refuse to go to Jannah, Shaykh? How do you refuse to live eternally, happily ever after? No job, no death, no taxes, no pressure, no prejudice, no complaints, no illness, no sorrow, no sadness, no stress, no pills. A brick of silver, a brick of gold. You know, he said, this is the invitation he's given you. And he said, in the Aqrabakum ilayya, the most beloved to my heart, Mawaddata, Aqrabakum ilayya yawm al qiyama, the most close, the closest to me on Judgment Day is Ahasinukum Akhlaq. We'll talk about that tomorrow. So come and join us, inshallah. Lastly, help my brothers and sisters in the business. Because you see, the scholars will tell you, what you give here is actually yours and year after. But when you don't, it will be your inheritors. The brother Sheikh just told me that. There's a waqf endowment. That's a legacy they're going to leave behind. And that's the business you can be proud of. So help. If everybody here gives at least 100 pounds, inshallah, we can hit our target. So do your best, brothers and sisters, because that could be your last thing you ever do. And if the king asks you or the queen asks you, give me a loan, will you not give her a loan? You will. What about the king of kings? If he's asking you for your own good. And that's what I'm going to leave you with. May Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula. Make us among those who listen to each and follow the best of it. I ask Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula to forgive us all. Ameen. Wa akhidu wa alhamdulillahi rabbil ameen. Wa sallam ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tali. Ya Rabbi naka alhamdulillahi wa barakatuhu alihi wa jibu alihi wa sultani. Allahumma salli alihi wa sallam 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 اللهم انصر الاسلام وعز المسلمين وعلي بفضلك كلمة الحق والدين واذل الشرك والمشركين اعداءك اعداء الدين اوقع الكافرين في الكافرين واوقع الظالمين في الظالمين واخذنا من بين السالمين اللهم احفظنا بالاسلام قائمين واحفظنا بالاسلام قاعدين واحفظنا في الاسلام راقدين ولا تشمت بنا الاعداء ولا الحاسدين اللهم احفظنا من بين ايدينا ومن خلفنا وعن ايماننا وعن شمائلنا ومن فوقنا ونعوذ بعد ما تكلم نغتال من تحتنا اقول وما تسمعون فما كان فيه من صلاه من الرحمن وما كان فيه من خطا من سن فمني ومن الشيطان والله رسول من البراء أعوذ بالله أذكركم بديوان ساه وأقم الصلاة